to him. That's right. Yes. Not having a wavering mind, but being sold out to him with everything that's on the inside of you. Yes, Lord. But when you're like that, then you can begin to see the blessings of God. The blessings of God. They'll just begin to flow in your life. Yes. Yes. And it won't be anything you know. that can stop it. Thank you, Lord. It'll just flow like right water. When you're walking in step with God, like he said, he'll make one step. Now if you yes. take two. Man. All you got to do is just stay in yeah. Listen to the master. He is the commander in chief. And whenever he speaks, all you have to do is get in line. You don't have to understand it. Just obey it. As long as it's in here, talk with it. And manifestation will come. Because you are our Savior, you are the deliverer, our healer, God, because you are everything that we stand in the need of. And so, Father, we invite you in this place right now, God, that you would speak a word from on high. God, send your Shekinah glory in this place. Let your Holy Spirit take complete control. God, we thank you. God, we magnify you. God, we glorify you. Because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. So, God, we stand here knowing today, God, you will show up and show out in whatever situation we came here with. God, when we leave this place, that our minds will be changed, that our hearts will be different, and we will see things differently, and we will hear things differently, but we won't leave here the same way that we came. And God, we thank you for each and every person that is here on today. They could have chosen to stay at home, but God, they got out of bed, and they made it in the house of God. I go from 1 to chapter 13. I'm sorry, to 1 to verse 13. Maybe I said 1 to chapter 13. She done lost her mind. Genesis chapter 3. 1 through 13. The preach come, that comes. If it don't, you're going to be taught today. 3. Chapter 1, verse 1. You have it, say amen. amen. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest ye die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of his fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord walk, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the, in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave me, gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? 
I will use her subject today. Who told you you were naked? Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, who told you that you were naked? I don't think you understand what I just said. I said, look at your neighbor and tell, ask them, who told you that you were naked? <laughs> now, if I make it through it, I make it through it. If I don't, we're going to shout together. You understand what I'm saying? Because this message, when he gave it to me, it was very difficult for me to sit through it and try to figure out which direction he was going with this thing. And I said, God, now, this is pretty powerful. What are you, gonna, what are you trying to teach us on today? And one thing about me, I don't ever want to operate in self because you learn nothing. It's not about me. When you leave this place, I want you to be able to recall this message 10 years from now. Amen. Who told you you were naked? Amen. And what we see here is... We know who Satan is, we know what he was, we know he's a trickster, we know that he was a fallen angel, and he was angry. So his desire is to sift us as wheat. His desire hasn't changed today. The only thing that has changed is our knowledge of Christ and of who he is. But in the garden of good and evil, God had given specific instructions to Adam and Eve, our first parents, and told them exactly what they were not to do. But Satan was on his head to destroy and bring separation between man and God. Why? Because he had fallen. Why did he fall? Because he became rebellious and he wanted to be like God. He wanted to put himself in a position where people worship him and not worship God. Amen. And any time you put your mind in a position like that, you can expect to fall. Amen. You don't want people to become so close and so close to you that they take their eyes off of Christ. Yes, say that. Say that. Satan's desire is to get you to a mindset that you can't even hear, you can't understand, you can't think. You can't make good decisions. Why? Because you're all caught up with what somebody told you Amen. about yourself. Amen. You see something that you want to run after, but because somebody has told you that you didn't have the education or you didn't have the knowledge or you didn't have the skill to accomplish it, you now have stopped running and stopped desiring to be what God already gave you the power to be. Yeah, no. Somebody told you that you weren't good enough. All right, now. Somebody told you your skin was too dark, your skin was too light, your lips were too big, your hair was too nappy. But somebody lied. God said, I made you in my so we don't need to Botox it out. We don't need to get plastic surgery. Whatever you don't like about yourself, God gave you those distinct qualities. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For purpose. You don't know where your blessing is coming from. Say it, now. Say it. But whatever God has called you to be, He made you. Uh huh. He put you in the position where you are right now in order for you to be limited so that you wouldn't get so high that you wouldn't realize it wasn't you. It was God. But it was all God. Amen. Then he puts you in a position where people can watch your struggle. There always has to be a witness. Yes, Lord. It has to be a witness. before man, uh -huh. as long as I know God is my covenant. Yes, Lord. Put my stuff out there, I don't care. I'll tell you myself. Because one thing I know, that is where I used to be. Y'all It's not where I am right now. All right. But Satan decided in the beginning he wanted to cause distraction in the garden of Eden.
that he wanted to mess up. I stay, but he didn't realize that God had a trick in the hand. All right. <laughs> now, whatever decision you make, whatever you decide to do, God still has deliverance Daddy. waiting just for you. How do I know this? Don't you think God knew Adam and Eve was going to eat of that tree? Yes, Lord. That's why he left them there. Yes. If it was a big deal if he said, I knew you before I formed you, I'm not going to do anything that's going to cause you harm. So I'll put you in a situation just to see what you're going to do about it. Will you choose God's way? Or will you choose his way? His way looks like God. Uh -huh. Sounds like God. Has all of the same trimmings. But if you dig a little deeper in his mess, you'll find out that it's not God. It's a set of straight from the pit. But then, just like Adam, Adam wanted to blame Eve for his mistake, but Adam was out of the place in the first place because it's man's job to protect that demon had no business being able to approach his wife. Amen. All right, now. So if it's your job to cover somebody, you don't leave that person unprotected. You cover them under the blood of Jesus yes. so that the enemy cannot come up against them to tempt them into doing evil in the first place. Yes. Yes. That does not just mean a husband and a wife. That means the body of Christ as a whole. And when we can get that in our mind and we understand that God didn't just allow this thing to happen. He allowed it to happen to show us how we're supposed to cover each other. <laughs> preach, girl, preach. <laughs> they became afraid when they heard his voice walking. How can a voice walk? <laughs> it wasn't his voice, it was his spirit. Yes. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. You are never alone, so I was right there when you did what you did in the first place. But you didn't know anything about anything until somebody told you you weren't good enough to have it. All right, now. You came in contact with some bad fruit. Mm. But what is God here to do today? Mm. Y'all didn't know who was coming. He did. God said it doesn't matter who you came in contact with. Yes, Lord. It doesn't matter the sin that you committed. God said, but today, he had to reclaim what was his. All right, now. See, sin separates you from God. Yes, Lord. Have you ever been in a place with God yeah. that was so intimate, mm -hmm. so wonderful, so sweet, so pure, so innocent? But then the enemy comes and sends distractions yes. to cause you to get off focus. Can I tell you something? He knows that there's a blessing on the other side of the distraction. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So the longer you listen to his foolishness, the longer you stay in bondage and away from the blessing that God has on the other side of the distraction. You don't have to listen to that mess. Amen. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. Eve had a choice. Amen. Even though Adam wasn't there, Eve had a choice of whether or not she wanted to eat of that tree. She heard the same instructions Adam did. But she chose to do wrong. Doing wrong, sinning is a choice. Yes, Lord. You can't tell me you can't help yourself. Amen. Because if I got to help myself, you definitely got to help yourself. All right now. Because with God, all things are possible. Yes, Lord. You can't do anything outside of the will of God and think he's not going to have something to say about it. Yes, Lord. But it depends upon 
of your obedience level of how long it takes for you to get back in right standing with God. And what Eve did caused us women some grief. Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But it was her choice. But I want you to understand something. Your choices don't just affect you. Your choices to sin affects everybody that's connected to you. Amen. Eve's choice didn't just affect her. Eve's choices are affecting all of us right now. Right now. Right now. Yes. But because Eve was uncovered, why do you think God said, Adam, where are you? Where are you? He didn't say anything to Eve. <laughs> yes. Because I don't know, no brother in here is going to let another man approach his wife and give her something to eat. I just don't know. <laughs> you know? I don't know. <laughs> what was Adam doing? That he didn't see what was coming after Eve. What are we doing that we're so distracted that we can't cover our sisters and brothers in Christ? And we can't see what's coming after them. Well, we have some that can carry the burdens of others, but then we have some that want to talk about them and pull them down and get them off track. But Amen. where are our sisters and brothers keepers? Amen. Satan can only enter in a couple of ways. One, the very first one is through your mind. The first place he can enter is through your mind. Yes, Lord. And when he comes into your mind, he causes you to doubt and deny what's right in front of your face. But you've got to learn. Sin is not about us just being free from sin. Sin is about us being free from everything that keeps us bound from serving our one and only true God. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. There is no such thing as a little sin. Mm -hmm. I hear people saying that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no big sin. Honey, sin is sin. Yes, Amen. it is. Amen. Amen. Anything that will separate you from the one that you love, are you going to allow it to happen? Then why will you allow it to happen with you and your God? He is your provider. If you look at it, the only way you can get anything is through him. Yes, Amen. So if it means I don't have a relationship with you so that he can continue to protect me and provide for me, see you. <laughs> I will give you the gift of the body and set you free. All right, now. Because there is no entanglement worse than sin. All right. And then let me tell you how, how we do. This is what Satan does. This is why he keeps us out of church. We know we see it Saturday night. We won't come to church Sunday morning because we think everybody knows we see it Saturday night. But you only wouldn't know because we weren't there. We don't have a clue. All right. Say that. But he'll keep you out of church whenever you sin. Don't allow that trick because we don't know your business. Except the Lord tells us. But then we're not going to expose you in front of everybody else because that's not God. It is not order. But if we know you've done something, it's up to us to look. Sister, look. I don't need you to stay out of that club. Okay. Now, if you're going to stay out of the club, I'm going to need you to sit down for a while because we don't need you in front of everybody. Okay. Because it'll mislead and confuse the body of Christ. That's true. Say that. Yeah. Yeah. But we're going to be praying for you, and don't nobody have to know we had this conversation with me and you. But I got you covered. Because I was once a sinner. Amen. Somebody prayed me through. Amen. Amen. And when we go to them, you know you wrong, you know. That's a bunch of mess. <laughs> we are supposed to pull people to us. Uh, not push them away, but the, the word of God draws. And when I go to a sister and brother to restore, I'm coming to restore you. Amen. Amen. How can I restore you? Because I've been redeemed. Amen. It was his blood that was shed for me on Calvary that caused me to have a relationship with him. Do I mess up sometimes? Yes, yes sir, buddy. Sure do. Oh, 
But you better believe I believe a daily repentance. Yes, Lord. Yes. Say yes. I would say I die every day. No matter what's going on on the inside of you, you're going to have crazy thoughts. I'm telling you the truth. I'm like, it's, just, it's, it's in your flesh. Yeah. But it's up to you whether you act on those thoughts Amen. or you ask God, ooh, Jesus, please Amen. take that off my mind. Take it away. Take it away, though. Yeah. Yeah. And if you fall on your knees, God, ooh, I don't ever want to go back that way. Say that. Better say that. I had no idea. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. I didn't know that residue was still there. Thank you, Lord. But guess where that comes from? Your heart. Thank you, Lord. So you have to ask God, created me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me so that the enemy won't have anything in me that if there's nothing in you to use, he got to keep it moving. Amen. Amen. But you have to be empty of our history and full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. He will try to cause you to become confused and distant and angry. And now you're bitter and you don't want to serve God. <coughs> because his job is to get you to blame God for all your troubles. All right. I'm running in on him to get ready to preach this morning. I started to give him the mic and said, go ahead and all that. <laughs> you can't blame God for your decisions. But what you can do is thank God that even though you made that decision, there's something called grace and mercy. And it'll get you out every time. Money can't do what grace and mercy can do. But when God's hand is on you, expect to make mistakes, expect to be a target of the enemy. But I love to hear people that have been through the greatest struggles because I know that their anointing is great. Because Satan doesn't come after you unless you are a threat to him. Well, I love who he's doing through this. Stop complaining. Tell God, thank you that you're here. Go through it. He chose you to suffer. Because he knew he could trust you with that stroke, right? Why? Because he knew one day you were going to give him glory for your deliverance. He trusted you with your trouble. You might have went through your complaining state. But guess what? He was standing back and just let him do what he do. Uh -huh. Leave him alone. Yes, when he Lord. figures out that after you get through complaining, you still got the symptoms. All right. yes. <laughs> and your complaining doesn't change how I feel about you. I still love you when you complain. Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He didn't hang that from the sixth to the ninth hour for anything. But he did it to cover all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So that you could go before the Lord and say, please, Lord, have mercy upon me because if it is you and you only have I sinned. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Sin does have consequences. Yes, Lord. But that's called his chest tight. Thank you, Lord. Oh, he gonna spank that, honey. Yes, thank you, Lord. But I'd rather get whooped by him than to get whooped by me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because he does it with love. Yes. And when he's done, I've learned and I'm better from it. I'm not wounded and I'm not broken. Right. But I know that he's taught me something that I can right. teach somebody else. Folks, if somebody come to you and tell you a testimony, it's because they don't want you to make the same mistakes that they did. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. They've already gone through it. Why are you going to keep walking down the same road? If I say it's a fire over there, don't walk that way. It's a big viper in the middle of the road. Don't go that way. And you keep walking, you need to get this. Yeah. <laughs> because God has given us the greatest gift of them all. When Adam and Eve did what they did, that opened us up to receive the Holy Ghost. Yes. Think about that. When Adam and Eve did 
did what they did, in order for God to restore us and bring us back to him, he had to send his son Jesus to die for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But not only did he die, in his dying, he gave us a gift. Yes, Lord. And that was the Holy Ghost. Why do you want to walk around without it? I don't understand it. Ain't no way in the world. Now, that's what you call being naked. Because now you don't have any covering and you don't have his spirit. I don't care who don't care nothing about the Holy Ghost. I don't care if they call that taboo, that stupid little thing. You know, shut your mouth. Because I'm still looking at you and your roof's still leaking. I'm looking at you and your car's still ready. And God can bless the whole church of people around me. And you still talking about what we shouldn't be doing in the church? You keep talking, boo boo. I'm going over here with the best folks. <laughs> and when you ready to come out, come we'll be no way official for your own. Okay. So you don't come over here looking for us. But because we listened to what God was telling us and followed the instructions, honey, we moving on to great things. Yes. And if you mess around and wait too long, that's going to be empty too. We're going to be gone somewhere. We got to have it. Yeah. 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 The only way we can hear and operate through faith and call one another, uh -huh. we got to have the Holy Ghost. Because yeah. that's when you can hear from the Lord yeah. and follow his direction. Yes, Lord. And that's when you can hear somebody trying to take your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I know you got my stuff. Give me my stuff back. <laughs> I ain't trying to kill you. I just want my stuff. Yeah. Now, you can call it what you want, but it was the Holy Ghost that told you. Because he was there to keep Peter. Why? Because he know who Peter was. Don't mess with Peter. <laughs> Give Peter his stuff back right now. I mean right now. But can I tell you how good God is? God will take the craziest, most uncomfortable situations put you in to be embarrassed Say that. Yes, Amen. Thank you, Lord. and then pull you right out in front of everybody that was talking about Thank you. you. Oh, yeah. 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 and then when he does that do you know folks still want to say something negative Amen. well you know what you don't have yeah. Yeah. to make you feel like you're 
way. Because see, when I come, I bring complete deliverance. Thank you, Lord. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I bring everything that you need and no devil in hell can take it from you. But if you go out there, you're going to come up with some stuff that you can't get rid of. You better say that. It's going to take it. He's going to leave you in it. You better say that. For a while. For you to know that I am the Lord God. I am. I am that I am. I am. And everything that you need comes from me. Yes, yes. Don't go out and ask man. If I didn't tell you to ask them, you sit there and you wait till your answer comes. Yes. Don't you go out there and try to create an answer that wasn't there in the first place. Right. All you have to do is follow his directions. What is his direction? Repent for your sins, because somehow you got yourself in this mess. Say that. Ask God to come in and wash you. Yes, he will. Ask God to come in and show you. Take the scales off my eyes so I can see the way you want me to see. Get the devil out of my ear, God, so I can hear you. Put a guard on my lips so I won't curse myself with my mouth. Sometimes we are our greatest enemy. Say that. Let the talkers talk, let the haters hate. Haters are elevators. Use them to go higher. Every time they talk, you need to be on your knees. Telling God thank you. Keep being nice to them. Because the Bible says when you are nice to them, you're heaping hot coals on their head. That can't feel good. You got to learn that sin is not to bring you to shame. But it's to bring you to repentance so you can have a deeper relationship with yeah. God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So when you see somebody in a fallen state, don't talk about them. Amen. They just haven't come into the same knowledge that you have. Yes, Lord. Pray for them. Because one day, one day. they're going to be a new beginning. Yes, Lord. I said it. Yeah, I did. Say that. I said it. Yes, Thank I did. Thank you, Lord God. Why? Because ain't nothing going down in the beginning but the word of God. Yeah. We ain't got no tricks, no hoodwinks, and no bamboozles. We just believe in preaching what's in that book right there. Amen. Because that's the only thing that'll save your soul. Amen. Don't let anybody trick you and pull you away from God. Yes, yes. Telling you you don't need to be at church all the time. Well, yeah. 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 Telling you they don't understand why you always doing this and doing that. Oh. Tell them I don't understand why you doing what you doing. <laughs> so we don't understand each other. So let us be confused together. And while you're confusing your state, I'm going to sit over here and be confused and you're my state wondering why you can't see how God is blessing me and follow me. Because I'm seeing how the devil is using you and I'm not following you. That's right. You know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Keep doing your stuff and your tree is going to be cursed. Now, I don't want your tree to be cursed from the root because he will turn you over to a reprobated mind because more than comes with your destruction. Yeah. All right, now. How many times do I have to warn you before you come out of your mess? Yes. But if he warn you right, it don't take but once. Sure. One good warning Lord. can turn you to your destiny. Yes, Lord. One good boy can show you I am God. And it's not the Lord is not going to come when you expect it to come either. No, no. Please help me. The warning does not come when you want the warning to come. That joke will come at 3 a.m. Just when you got that second breath. You know the one I'm talking about. Deep asleep. <laughs> he said, wake up. Pray. Pray. Talk to me. I have need of you. Yes. Yes. Guess what? It may not always be for you. That's right. It may be for you to cover your sister or brother in Christ. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying, if he do a wake up, because, you know, I'm just saying, you never know. It could be me. If it's me, I need y'all praying. Amen. Huh? Right. I'm praying for you. Can you give up an hour of sleep? 
Like Jesus said, can you, I just needed y'all to pray one hour. One hour. One hour. One hour. For a lifetime of deliverance. Oh my God. Yes, Lord. One hour. One hour. For a lifetime of deliverance. What God was doing, what Jesus was doing in the Garden of Gethsemane was forever. All right, now. But all he needed was a tithe of one hour. Yes, Lord. Who knows what that one hour was 10% of? But all he asked was for one hour. One hour. Can you give God what he's asking for? Yes, Lord. Oh, I see you thinking. Oh, yes, I see you thinking. Mm hmm I hear you. God, am I living like you want me to live? That's why we have an altar. You don't have to stay in the state that you're in. Amen. We have a God that will heal, yes. set free, and deliver. And you know the best blessings comes when you don't have to say it out loud. Mm -hmm. But you just get the moment. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody know what that means but you and God. Say that. Yes. Say that. And while you're doing that, guess what? He's working it out for you. He's working it out. Because you may not always be able to open up your mouth and pray, but you can pray on the inside. When that enemy tells you you can't, you turn around and say, I can. You didn't make me. God is my maker and creator. And just because you told me I can't, I'm going to celebrate because now I know you are a liar. You can't tell the truth. Right. So that means that I can do it. And for everybody that said you couldn't, you weren't good enough, you never were going to be good enough, you were this, you were that, it doesn't matter. What you do is go out and bless them when God does it for you. Yes. I just want to drop this on you. Yes. Just to give this to you and bless you. Because I thank you. Yeah. Because you were my greatest motivation. Because yeah. whether you want to admit it or not, your enemies do motivate you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saying we couldn't be, that we were going to close. Thank you for saying the beginning wasn't going to last. I appreciate you. Because you just made our testimony that much greater. All right, now. Yeah. Yes. You did what the enemy wanted you to do. Uh -huh. Now go back and tell the rest of them what you have seen this day. God brought us out yeah. and delivered us into our home. So now what can you say about these things? If God before you, who can be against you?